how's it going everybody? Um, sorry, couple minutes late. I have been running around like crazy this morning trying to do all the things and um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so you know how you have like those, a day where you think that you're gonna like get all these things done so that the next day is doable? <laughs> Well, that was yesterday and nothing happened the way that we thought it was going to happen because um, we found my son a car. And I don't know if you've bought a car in a while, but we've been looking and looking and looking. Um, it's his first car, so we're like looking on Craigslist, looking on different used car places and cars are just getting snatched up so fast. I just, it's incredible. You call, it's been posted for like an hour and there's already like 10 people in line wanting to see it. So anyway, you don't need to hear all of my blubbering, but this is Baby Grace in real life. <laughs> and that is how I say my Tuesday mornings are. Baby Grace in real life. So this is real life. <laughs> um, anyway, so Sunday night, we get home from a very relaxing couple day, 24 hours or so, 30 hours um, for our anniversary. We were in Morro Bay and just had a really great time. My husband just like hiked my butt off. I'm seriously, we walked like six or seven miles the first day on the beach, pretty relaxing. And then we got up and walked like seven miles on a hike and I was toast by the time we got home. And so we got home. Of course, the dog is crazy. <laughs> the dog like got no attention while we were gone. And so she's nuts. And Josh says, okay, I gotta go walk this dog. You just relax or make dinner, or whatever. So he's out on a walk and what does he see but a car that looks really good for my son. So of course he calls, this is like a loop that we always walk and they haven't even posted it yet. They literally put the signs in the window like a half an hour before. And we were like, la, la, la. Like, that's the hardest part is to find a car that you want that looks like it's in good shape and there aren't a hundred people trying to get it before you do. So he like talked to the people. They're super friendly. And they say, why don't you just drive it home? And, you know, because Josh wanted to take it to our mechanic to get it checked out and blah, blah, blah. And so... We end up going over there together, driving it around, stopping in the Walmart parking lot where all the lights are and checking it all out, take it home with us, and then spent the whole day yesterday sitting at the mechanic's office. They are looking at it, so nothing happened that was supposed to happen. So crazy day. I was supposed to get my giveaway all started. So that's why I was late trying to get my giveaway set up on my website. And because this is only the second giveaway that I've ever done, I can't remember how I did it last time. So anyway, there you go. Um, let's see what else. Oh, we've just got like crazy. I'm going to call it the COVID crazies the COVID crazies. Um, yeah, just crazy. Um, my daughter was sitting at the table last night, just crying. Oh, the emotions are coming. You know, she's got a crazy full schedule and then Someone on her volleyball team gets COVID. So that means that she doesn't know what that means for her. And can she still go to school? Does she have to quarantine? Blah, 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 blah. All these things. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's just a lot going on right now. So um, that's me. That's me in this moment right now. 
Um, so it was like 9.02 and I was like, ah, I haven't finished my giveaway. Ah, I haven't even looked at what the chapter is. So we are going off the cuff this morning and I hope that's okay. Um, yes, I don't know what to say. I'm completely not prepared. <laughs> so, um, yes, that's me. I wonder how you guys are doing. Is it crazy in your neck of the woods? Like, are you just feeling like you are at least three or four steps behind and trying to catch up? Because that's what I'm feeling like right now. Although, where is Mo? She did get a walk this morning and um, she's doing good. So, <laughs> Here we go. Um, we're going to read, I looked at the title, and this is actually a really funny story. And I wonder if any of you guys have teenagers, this is totally relevant to my life right now. I wonder if any of you have teenagers at the moment and you are, you are, um, you know, trying to figure out how to get them on track. <laughs> and know that what you say is what you mean and all that. So this chapter is called Washing Windows. One of my proudest moments growing up. No, just kidding. But um, this is from season six, episode 13, called The Angry Heart. And I must say that I didn't really like this episode when I was growing up because it's just, I did, I guess I did, but I just didn't like the kid. The kid was such a jerk. And I guess that's just the point of the story. Hmm, yeah. So I don't know if you remember, there is a couple in Walnut Grove. Their name is the Davenports, the Davenports. I wouldn't have remembered that, but it's in the chapter. So, and they have a grandson who comes and lives with them, lives with them for a little bit. And he's just a troublemaker. And of course, Charles Ingalls finds a way to turn him around and um, yeah, and that's kind of the story. So um, this is a story of when I was a teenager and my mom had to little turn me around. So I hope you enjoy this story called Washing Windows. And the quote is from Charles Ingalls and it says, my pa always said, good hard work on the land puts the poison out of your system. Children need correction. A child who has not been disciplined creates conflict in the home and steals peace from a family. Doesn't that, isn't that the truth? Um, in Walnut Grove, the Davenport's joy disappears when they discover their visiting grandson is abusive and dishonest. After stealing Charles's watch, the boy faces jail or working off the debt on the Ingalls farm. Hard work can be a great discipline. It transforms an angry heart. When I was growing up, my parents didn't discipline us by grounding us. Letting us hang out in our rooms for a weekend was too lenient. When we got into trouble, it meant lots of free labor for my folks. One time during high school, my twin sister and I were supposed to grab a ride home from Disneyland with a family friend. Instead, we chose to ride the four hours home with our boyfriends and we left at midnight. Now, side story, Disneyland's about four or five hours away from where we lived. So for us to leave Disneyland at midnight with our boyfriends instead of the mom friend that my mom set up for us to ride home with is kind of a little bit of a big deal. Yes. So boy, were we in a mess of trouble. By the time we strolled in the front door, my mom had quite a list for us. We spent the day washing every window in our house, inside and out. I started out mad, but every clean window revealed more of the truth. My actions were to blame, not my mom's list of chores. When children realize every act of disobedience results in a consequence, responsibility takes root. The Davenport's grandson, Todd, works hard, 
with Charles and discovers the source of his anger, resulting in a heart change. Charles was right. Putting children to work can be the most effective disciplined. Not only do the household chores get done, the children become a joy to be around. And the verse is from Proverbs 29, 17, and it says, discipline your children. You'll be glad you did. They'll turn out delightful to live with. <laughs> so there's my story of washing windows. And um, some people would say, oh my goodness, Wendy, I can't believe you would do that. Now this is before cell phones. This is, you know, I don't know what we were thinking. I don't know if we thought we were not going to get in trouble, but um, we got in trouble, <laughs> but we didn't just get yelled at. We got put to work and I will say my mom definitely instilled in us a work ethic and a sense of consequences. <laughs> and um, I definitely do not ground my children. I've never grounded my children. They've never actually not been able to do what they want to do. They just get to do what they don't want to do. <laughs> so I um, definitely give that, get that from my mom. And they actually don't get in trouble very much. I think they are probably scared of the jobs that I will give them. But they're also, you know, my daughter's just a freshman this year, and so she hasn't had that much um, independence. My son is just like a homebody. He doesn't want to go anywhere anyway, so kind of makes it easy for me. But, um, but yeah, that's me. And, you know, it's funny because yesterday <clears throat> um, my son has this job to – on Mondays, he vacuums the car and washes it. And I noticed that this morning when we got out of the car after my walk with Mo, that the back seats were full of sand. And this mor or yesterday I told him, I said, hey, you gotta get the car washed, um, but make sure you shop back those seats because we went to the beach with Mo and they're really sandy. <laughs> so I saw the sand and I thought, hmm, well, he just definitely sped through that job and I don't have to get mad. I just have to say, oh, looks like you might have to vacuum the seats again. <laughs> so I'm working on you know, not getting emotional, just saying, oh, you didn't do a really great job, so I guess you can do it again. <laughs> anyway, that's me today hanging out, um, now totally thinking about how my windows could totally be washed. <laughs> Maybe my kids need to get in trouble so I can um, have them wash my windows like I did when I was a teenager. Um, but um, let's see. Okay, my last thing is, oh, Hold on, let me grab it. I thought I was all ready, but um, I am starting my giveaway today. Yeah, it's not ready yet. I still have to get the giveaway program set up. So give me an hour. But my giveaway is starting today. And um, I am feeling like, September, this is just seeming like the month of friendship because we're all back to school, back to things where we get to see people again, hopefully. And um, I just feel like it's a month of reconnecting with old friends and making new friends, my, and just making new friends and new teammates and all that. So, this month's giveaway is going to be a um, covered wagon magnet and a friendship bracelet, but not just one for you, one for a friend. So you can give one of those to you and then you get another one for a friend. So you're winning two magnets and two bracelets 
The bracelet quote is one of my favorites from Alice Garvey, and she says, we've got something here that's just about the most important thing in the world, true friends. And that is from season five, as long as we're together, the first episode that Brent and I were ever on. And that is how this little house friendship has started with all of these wonderful cast members. So friendship, September giveaway. That is what we're doing. You've got um, two magnets. I can sign them or not, whatever you want. And two bracelets. And the bracelets, you can do whatever color string you want. Um, but it will be these friendship bracelets that you can give to somebody. And you can give them also a covered wagon magnet to put on your fridge or whatever. And of course, I'll throw in a autographed picture for each of you. And that is what the September giveaway is. Um, all you gotta do is go sign up to join my email list. And that gives you one entry. And then every friend that you invite and they enter, you get a second entry or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or hundredth, whatever, however many friends you want to invite. Now I get this question. If I'm already subscribed to your email list, can I still do it? Of course, you are my faithful few, <laughs> and you guys can, every single month, sign up again. You're not gonna get entered on the email list 40 times. I promise you, it will just say she's already entered, or already subscribed, good. So, super fun. Um, 